If you could ask your ancestors one question, what would it be? Would you ask them what they did with their days, how they loved, or perhaps if they have some advice for you? Maybe you'd ask if they remember what the sky looked like on their most favorite morning of their lives. My sky was the calmest shade of periwinkle this morning. So often in the California summer months, the sky is tinged with gold when we awake, announcing the heat of the day to come. But today, some sort of magical interplay between the fog and the rising sun made for an almost purple ceiling above me as I tended the garden. When I'm out here, hands in the dirt, I think about what it means to live a sustainable lifestyle, what our ancestors would have to say about this modern world we live in. What ancestral wisdom do I have deep within my bones that can help me through these troubling times? I know that though our ancestors may not have used this language, they were indeed the embodiment of a sustainable lifestyle. Ancestral wisdom was elusive for me for years. The noise of modern life all but drowned it out. It wasn't until I deliberately slowed down the pace of my days that I could hear their voices within. I tune in particularly to my grandmothers, the ancient women in my ancestral lines who worked and toiled and loved so very deeply. The ones who made celebrations magical even without much in the way of monetary wealth. The ones who used every available resource to feed and nurture their families. The ones who left legacies of love and care and a deep respect for the earth and for her many gifts. When we lived in community, we lived in a way that was more sustainable for everyone, for the people, the animals, and the land underneath us. We were deeply connected to the seasons, to the passage of time, and the evolution of our environments. We could not harm the land or treat it with wanton disregard, for then it would not provide for us in the coming seasons. We learned what to take, what to harvest, we learn to leave enough for others, for the creatures around us, for the seeds to renew life in the next growing season. A sustainable lifestyle is more than just choosing reusable bags at the market or storing leftovers in beeswax wrap instead of plastic though those are objectively very good things. A sustainable lifestyle for me means thinking back to the choices that my ancient grandmothers may have made out of necessity, but that I can make out of a desire to live sustainably. For instance, when I bring home something absolutely delightful from the market, whether that's a flat of tomatoes, a whole pasture-raised chicken, or an armful of sweet corn, I want to make sure I'm using every part I possibly can. I want to honor the earth for her gift of abundance by not wasting anything. I want to make sure my money stretches as far as it possibly can by getting as many meals as possible out of everything I bring into the kitchen. And, I want to cook for my family in a way that truly nourishes them and makes them feel connected and cared for, loved. And I do so love cooking this way. It makes me feel full in the best possible sense. I feel like I am not only nourishing my family, but 
nourishing my own creativity, my ties to my ancestors, and my sense of place in this world. But I also need to acknowledge the enormous amount of labor and effort, and yes, privilege that goes into living this way. Because I strive to live within these principles of ancestral wisdom that govern a sustainable lifestyle, I sacrifice in other areas. I have less time for running the children to activities outside the home. I don't have the mental capacity to learn all the new hobbies and skills that catch my eye. I could probably be out in the world, earning more money and security for my family if I chose a different sort of life. And I think I find that, well, a bit sad. Our modern society rewards and encourages overconsumption and buying anew instead of using every last bit. It makes packaged and processed foods more accessible. It values novelty and variation and an endless array of choice. It is far easier and cheaper to buy fast food or fast fashion than it is to invest in heirloom quality organic linen garments or humanely raised meat. Our ancestors never had the choice. Animals that were raised for food lived right alongside the humans that tended them. Clothing was made to last and repaired when torn, repurposed when outgrown. This way of living was inherently sustainable. So how can we find a way to reconcile these sustainable lifestyle methods with our modern society? As individuals, we can certainly prioritize the measures we find most fulfilling and beneficial. We can mend. We can bake from scratch. We can use all parts. There is joy in that, I think. However, we cannot rely on individual actions alone, and we also mustn't allow ourselves to feel guilty if we find ourselves leaning on convenience products due to financial or mental health necessity. After all, it's not as if we've been set up to succeed here. I personally believe we need our society at large to begin to see the value in sustainable ways of life in ancestral ways of living and working together for the good of everyone. If society comes to see that our current way of living is unsustainable, that it is causing harm to the land, to the animals, and to all the humans living on this earth, then perhaps we can begin to make the changes that will truly secure our future. Our governing bodies can make choices that reflect our values, our desire to live in a way that nourishes and nurtures everyone and everything. At least, these are the thoughts that flow through my mind as I tend the garden, as I prepare our meals, and as I dream under a cloudless periwinkle sky.